want to talk to you today about the power of negative thinking. You say, why are you doing a sermon in front of an old abandoned school bus? Um, well, that'll make sense later on. But let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13. You know, people say that uh, to be mentally well, you have to always be positive and always look on the bright side and always, always think the best of everything and whatever. Uh, no, no, that's not true. And that's not what you're going to come away with if you believe the King James Bible. Uh, you're going to see that there's actually quite a bit of power in thinking negatively. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Uh, is that positive? No. No, it's not. When you read the King James Bible, you'll realize this book is very negative towards man, me, and you. Um, it's very negative towards men, but it's very positive towards God and towards heaven. It's very important to understand. But you see, when you go into this life and you start thinking that things are always going to get better and things are going to improve, uh, you're going against laws of science, number one. Second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. Everything gets worse with time. You know what I mean? Flat tire, rusted out rim, all rusty and things and whatever else. Old decommissioned bus. This thing was a $100,000 vehicle at one point in time. These old school buses, you know, I can't say, well, maybe this one wasn't, but you try to buy a brand new school bus, these things are $100,000. Now it's sitting here in a field, abandoned. Hmm. It got worse with time. I'm going to say some more things about public schooling here as we continue. But uh, just thought this would be a good thing. Instead of seeing some beautiful picturesque thing in nature and whatever which there is beautiful nature around me here but I want you to see something that's a uh, negative you see next let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4 verses 1 through 4 I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort with all long suffering and doctrine you know, reproving and rebuking uh, isn't always a positive. Okay, that's negative. What are people's reactions going to be to it? Verse 3, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. You know what the majority of church buildings are in this world? There are people who go out and... After their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's what they are. Why? Because there's so much variation within them. I mean, does the Bible say that you can, you know, give all this variation? Does the Bible have all the qualifications for different colors of carpet and different types of buildings and different way that people dress and different types of music and different types of... That stuff's not in here. Then what it's, what's it there for in organized religion? It's there because they go and they, they build these things after their own preferences they're not basing it on scripture so it's on their own preferences they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears i don't like rick warren but i sure like benny hinn i don't like benny hinn but i like joe olstein i don't like joe olstein but i like jack hiles i don't like jack hiles but i like jack van impey i like jerry falwell i like billy graham i like you know you see what i'm saying it isn't about absolute truth. It's about preference. And it's gotten much worse with time. You could go back to the 1800s and you could walk into a Lutheran church or a Presbyterian church or a Baptist church or a Methodist church or whatever else and you'd see people dressed pretty much the same way and you'd hear the gospel being preached the same way. You'd hear sin being condemned and preached hard against. You would go into those places and they would be preaching hell, fire, damnation types of sermons. Not anymore. Why? The time came when they turned their ears away from the truth. You see? Negative. It's negative. You say, why? I think, I think things are getting better. Then you're mentally sick. Things are not getting better. They're getting worse. That's a law of science. 
things are not getting better. They're getting worse. Let me ask you a question. This thing, if it sits here for another 10 years, is it gonna be in better condition or is it gonna be worse? You're gonna come back in 10 years and this thing's gonna be all glossy and shiny and the motor's gonna be running again and the tires are gonna somehow inflate themselves and repaint the rims by itself without a man coming and restoring it? No, this is gonna be worse. These windows are probably gonna be busted out, the stuff inside and whatever, you know, it's gonna be worse. If the Lord tarries, you know, if his timing, I'll say it this way, not if he tarries, if the Lord's timing for the catching up of the body of Christ and the time of Jacob's trouble and the second coming and millennial kingdom, if that's not for another 10 years, are churches, are people going to be better or worse in 10 years? Worse. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And when you realize that as a Christian, when you realize that, and, and even if you're lost, even if you're a secular, the most atheist, God-rejecting, Bible-hating, you know, pervert out there or whatever else, you still have to realize things get worse. They get worse and worse and worse. The world's not getting better. And when you get to that point of understanding that, when you accept reality, now you can do something. Okay? You can uh, better your position, in other words. But let's look at the words of Jesus Christ himself, Matthew chapter 24. We'll see if God manifests in the flesh what he thought of man. Matthew chapter 24, verse 3 through 12. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Hmm. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you. Is there a deception today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, people are liars. It's just amazing the level of deception that's out there. Verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. You know what's interesting? Every Roman Catholic priest out there says that they are another Christ. They wear the P and the X, the Greek symbols for Christ, on their outfit a lot of times. They literally teach, according to official Catholic doctrine, a Roman Catholic priest is another Christ. That's what they say. And it's interesting because Vatican versions, the new Vatican versions, like the ESV and some of the others, I shouldn't say ESV, but a lot of those, what they do is, because I don't know if the ESV actually does it in this verse, is why I said that, but a lot of these new versions, they'll change Christ to Messiah. We'll see if the Catholic priests aren't calling themselves Messiah. And you say, well, see, but Messiah is the Hebrew word for Christ. Okay, but the word in the Greek New Testament there, be it Nestle's or the Receptus manuscripts, it's Christos. It's Christ. You can't put in the word Messiah there. You're taking a Hebrew word and sticking it into a Greek New Testament to cover up for the fact that Jesus Christ said, they're going to come saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. Hmm. Um, do you think that the Catholic priests that are molesting these children all the time, do you think that they're deceitful with how they're doing that? Are they deceiving the children? Oh, honey, you're safe with Father so-and-so. He's a man of God. You know, he's an evil man. And he's waxing worse and worse. I'm sure it's probably a bit of a shock the first time a Catholic priest uh, molests a child. It's probably kind of a, he might even feel dirty doing it or something. His conscience might still be there a little bit to convict him and say that was wrong. But guess what happens? The more he does it, the worse it gets. The power of negative thinking. You don't look at a Catholic priest, you don't look at the Catholic system and say, you know, they're constantly being caught and thousands of new children coming out all the time and saying, yeah, we were molested, yes, all this bad stuff's happening. But I think the Catholic Church is going to get better. Uh, no, it gets worse. 
Let's continue. Verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Wait a second. Wars and rumors of wars, but don't worry about it? For all these things must come to pass? Huh? Why would Jesus Christ say, yes, there's wars and rumors of wars, um, but don't worry about it? Um, because he provides a way out. That's why. Like I said in my video down at the ocean, Elon Musk comes out and he's saying, we got to build spaceships and get to Mars and build colonies there before World War III starts. Oh, well, he's, not, he's not heeding the advice of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ said, ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled. Don't worry about it. You know, I'm not troubled right now by war. I'm not. I'm a Bible-believing Christian. I know where I'm going to go when I die. I know I'm going to go to be with the Lord. They say, hey, uh, there's a nuke headed right your way. It's going to hit 100 yards that way. Okay. Going to go to be with the Lord today. What am I worried about? I know where I'm going when I die. See, I don't have to be troubled. But if you're lost out there, you don't know where you're going. You can't really know. But I'll tell you in a little bit here how to be saved. Verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. It's just starting. Just getting started. Um, there's going to be major events. There already are. I mean, there's right now, there's a big typhoon headed towards uh, Taiwan, I think it is. And um, there's a big, this uh, Florence or whatever that's heading towards the East Coast within a, a week or so. There's bad stuff happening. You know, all of the flooding and everything that the world is experiencing right now and all these weird storms and whatever else. And insurance companies are having to keep paying out and paying out and paying out. You know what? Let's be positive. I think that everything's going to be fine. There's always going to be insurance to cover losses, property damage and things and acts of God. There's always going to be something there. Let's be positive. Or you can have the power of negative thinking and say, not only is our economy really bad right now in America, I mean, it's artificial growth and stuff because of Trump doing some things, but uh, we're in debt, okay? Real bad debt. Uh, we had the Federal Reserve created back a long time ago, just what about 100 years ago, I guess now, and they created uh, a very false money system, and we're in hyperinflation right now. Um, kind of a slower hyperinflation, but if you look at back 100 years ago compared to today, yeah, we're in hyperinflation. And this economy is going to eventually crumble. And all of the natural disasters that have been happening, uh, their insurance companies are paying out. Eventually, they're going to run out of money. Now, if you believe in the power of negative thinking, you start to say, huh, maybe I should have a more sustainable way of living. Maybe I should get out of the whole insurance thing and not rely on insurance. Okay, because the insurance system is going to fall. It's going to crumble. Maybe I should simplify my life so I don't have as much to lose. And there's a whole lot of other, you know, good ideas and things like that. But you see, you have to think negatively to get to that mindset. You can't look at the world positively and say, you know, I think things are getting better. You know, we're going to get hit by a hurricane and, and all this other stuff. And there's all these things and wars and rumors of wars. But it's going to get better after that. It's just going to keep getting better. Or you can stop the little daydreaming, the little opium pipe dream there, and uh, look at reality and say, no, actually things are negative. Just like Jesus Christ said. Verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. He's talking to Jews. Certainly true. And then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. Yeah, there's a lot of hate out there right now. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. What do false prophets tell people? They prophesy good things. You go to the average church building right now, they're not going to tell you about all the negative stuff. Because it would ruin your Sunday. 
it would be good for you know conversation sitting around your Sunday dinner table with all your friends and family that when they come over and and it would just it would just ruin your day and you'd go off to some other church and and join there and 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 so then that the church that you left they'd lose your income and and we can't have that now can we false prophets will prophesy lies to people that listen to them they will tell you that things are getting better or, you know, another one of the, the big false prophet things is they'll say, uh, actually, there is no rapture. We're going to go into the great tribulation. But it's, it's okay because it's not going to be as bad as you think. It's going to be actually a good time for Christians. <laughs> uh, read the book of Revelation. It's not a good time. Okay? It's going to be a very bad time. And if Christians go into that time there, the great tribulation, it's called the time of Jacob's trouble, actually, because it's the time of Israel's trouble. Jacob, Israel, you know. But if Christians go into that time period, there's all kinds of doctrinal problems. Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 4 both say that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. You're sealed. You are eternally secure today. What about somebody goes into the time of Jacob's trouble and they take the mark of the beast? What happens? That's a problem. Every one of the Pauline epistles starts and ends with a, a promise of peace from God. And yet, Revelation chapter 6, the Lord Jesus Christ opens up one of the seals, the second seal, and peace is taken from the earth. How does that work? Paul, peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, oops, sorry. In the future, he's going to take peace from the earth. But Christians are still going to be there. And no, that doesn't work. The body of Christ is caught up before the time of Jacob's trouble starts. Because we haven't re rejected Jesus Christ. The Jews have. So God's going to give them seven years of signs and wonders and show them that the book of Revelation is inspired. But the false prophets are going to come out and they're going to say, the rapture's a lie, the pre-trib fib, there is no rapture. You're going to go into the great tribulation. But don't worry, because it's not going to be that bad. We're going to have time to witness, and we're going to be able to talk to people. And uh -huh. False prophets. Verse 12, Matthew chapter 24, verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Oh boy. There's so much sin right now because you see of the positive angle to Christianity. Let's get people into our church buildings. Let's invite saved and lost to our church buildings. No scripture at all for that. I mean, church buildings aren't in the Bible, but even worse than that, where is there scripture for saying, let's build this big, huge building and get both saved and lost to come to it? And then let's preach good, positive messages. You drive down the road and you see these church buildings and you see their big billboards outside and it's all positive stuff. Why? Because they don't believe in the power of negative thinking. They don't believe evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. They don't believe in that. And so iniquity abounds as a result. Instead of the churches standing up there and the preachers standing up from the power of, of God's word, the King James Bible, and saying, Thus saith the Lord, you're in sin. How dare you drink that alcohol and get drunk like that? How dare you look at that pornography? How dare you mess around with extramarital affairs and things like this? And how dare you young people commit fornication? How dare you put that wicked television before your eyes? Oh no, that's not that's not positive, you see? It's not positive. So what happens? Iniquity abounds. And it leads to the love of many waxing cold. People aren't loving each other anymore. You say, wait, are you saying we have to be negative in order to love? Yes, completely. If I'm a doctor and you come into my office and I see you have cancer and I say, well, this is going to ruin their day. I'm not going to tell them about the cancer because it's negative. Do I love you? No. I'm a preacher. I'm a minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I see you in sin, and a lot of you do, I do see in sin, am I loving for not preaching negatively about your sin? No. If I don't love you, I'm going to preach positive things to you. I'm going to tell you that you're doing fine. And God loves you just as you are and everything else. And I'm not going to convict you of your sin. Any preacher 
that does not preach on sin and is hard against sin, anyone like that, they are a positive, lying devil. They hate you. That's the way it is. But let's continue our uh, negative rant here. Go back to the book of Romans. You know, if you can honestly look at this world and, and be real and straight and say, you know, I do see the corruption. I do see the, the evil and I, I see bad things coming. And, and you know what? I'm not really the great, that great of a person myself. I've done some pretty wicked things. I don't even know what all the Bible says, but you know, I can say, yeah, I've I've lied to people, I've I've backstabbed people, I've I've you know, whatever, and and my life is pretty rotten right now, to be quite frank with you. And I'd I'd kind of like to have a different life than what I have. Then I got some verses for you. Romans chapter three, verse ten: As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understandeth, there is none that seeketh after God. They are all gone out of the way. They are together become unprofitable. There is none that doeth good, no, not one. Talk about a negative thing to say about man. God looks down and he says, um, well, there's, there's none right, oh, except for him and her, and oh, well, they're good people. And God looks down and he says, there is none righteous, no, not one. Not even one out of seven billion people are good in God's sight? Not one. Zero. That's rather negative. But you see, that negative truth that says, I'm no good, it leads to a positive outcome. Because you say, God is good. My Lord Jesus Christ, He died on the cross to pay for my sin. He paid, did something positive, to take care of my negative condition. And I can have, I go to heaven when I die? Yeah, absolutely. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. The Bible says here, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. And again, you say, well, that's, that's negative. Yes, but it's positive. It's negative that all have sinned, but it's positive because it qualifies you for salvation. See, if we didn't have a Savior, Jesus Christ, if He didn't die on the cross, and it was just all, well, you got to try and work your way to heaven. That's what most people do. They think to themselves, well, you know, I, I never killed anybody. You say, what about st stealing things? Uh, well, you know, a few small items, but you know, I, I've done nice things. You see, what are they trying to do? They're trying to tip the old scales. I can't tell you how many times I've heard that from, from lost people. Well, yeah, I've, I'm not perfect. I'm no saint. Yes, you're right about that. I'm no saint, but I've done some pretty good things. I think, I think you know, I remember this one guy, he said to me, he said, I, I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. <laughs> Real cocky. Died and went to hell. You know, I knew the guy well as a neighbor and things. Died and went to hell. Died in his own vomit. The drunkard. Fell forward into the bathtub, vomited, drowned. I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. Yeah, he was all right, all right. I don't think so. All have sinned. Come to that point of understanding that negative truth so it can lead to a positive end, your salvation. Go next to Romans chapter 5. Say, well, I don't, I don't have a Bible, and I don't really know if I want to read a, a book that's so negative. Keep being positive, you know? Things are getting better. Don't worry. You watch. As you're watching the video, you're going to see this thing start to shine up. It's going to get a coat of wax on it. It's going to be nice, and that, that tire is going to just start to inflate. You keep watching. Be positive. <laughs> Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Are you a sinner? You say, well, I'm not as bad as... Are you a sinner? Have you done things that you knew were wrong and you did them anyhow? Jesus died for you. 
Understand the negative truth about yourself, but then understand the positive aspect of that. When we were yet without strength, you can't ever be perfect. You can't get to a point of saying, I know I'm going to heaven because I've been such a wonderful person. You can't do that. I mean, I've, I've seen articles and things where they ask the popes and they say, are you going to go to heaven when they die, when you die? And, well, um, we all may resolute, or, you know, have some hope in there and, and certainly we, they can't say yes. You mean to tell me a man could get to the whole high level of the very head of the Catholic Church, the church that supposedly Christ founded, <laughs> yeah, he can get the whole way to the top of the thing and yet he still does not know that he's going to go to heaven when he dies. I don't, I, I, I think I'm, you know, maybe if I get in purgatory a little bit and, and stuff, yeah, probably, you know, I, I think I might. Jesus Christ came and he died for sinners when you're yet without strength. Did you ever get so low down in your sin that you're without strength? You just want to quit? You just, you're about ready to blow your brains out, quite frankly. You say, I'm tired of this life. You're yet without strength. That's why Jesus Christ said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Are you heavy laden? Are you laboring because of sin? Are you sick and tired of your life? You get a little negative there, aren't you? Good. Good. If you're a woman, are you sick and tired of men using you and abusing you? And if you're a man, I mean, there's women that abuse and use men too. Love of many shall wax cold, you know, like Jesus Christ said in the end times. Are you tired of it? Starting to get a little negative, aren't you? Good. Keep going. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You are earning wages. And you know it. You know it. I mean, this, this is a law of science, okay? <laughs> you drink uh, one beer. Well, is that the end of the world? No. Um, you drink two more. Um, you just earn more, okay, so to speak. Uh, you're earning more drunkenness. You drink four more. You see, are your, is, you know, your mental capacities, are they going to get better or worse with the more that you're doing? You see? You go out and you steal a stick of gum off the store shelf. Next time you go back, you steal a one liter bottle of soda pop. Next time you go back, you... Is your punishment getting worse? The wages of sin is death, you see. This thing here comes off the showroom floor and it's driving down the road. Bugs start splattering on the windshield. Oh, there's a pothole. Whoop. Oh, you just kind of worked on the suspension a little bit there and some of the tie rods up front and whatever else and other bolts might have kind of loosened. And, and then you get in the winter time and you drive on the roads with all the calcium chloride that they put on the roads and things around here and, and uh, salt and everything else. And all of a sudden you notice that your shiny paint's starting to kind of rust a little bit. And you get out here in the sunlight and all of a sudden it's starting to fade the paint and, and all the letters are starting to kind of come off here. And, and oh, we, the caulk around the windows is starting to... The reality of this world is it's negative negative you say but you see we can interject something from outside of the closed system we can overcome the law of entropy by bringing in something from the outside you can restore this with new paint you can restore it with new put a new wheel on and, and new tires and, and you can see you, you can an outside influence exactly you see your life is rotten as a sinner and you can't fix yourself you see? What do you need? An outside influence. Almighty God needs to come into your life and fix things up for you. A lot of people would rather just kind of say, I think it's going to get better. Just let things go. We'll see. We'll see. I think it'll be all right. I think things are going to just continue to kind of get better. Yeah, sure, you know, it looks bad right now, but I, I think things are looking up. Nonsense. 
Come to the end of your self-righteousness, friend. Because if you don't, you're going to end up in the junk heap. Like this old thing here. And the junk heap for man is called hell. Where lost sinners go. And they go down and they burn. And it's your soul, by the way, that burns in hell. Come up the great white throne judgment. Revelation chapter 20 talks about it. You come up the great white throne judgment, you are given an eternal body. And I believe it's going to be a worm, but that's a whole other study. Where their worm dieth not, the Bible says in Mark chapter 9. But you are given an eternal body that doesn't burn up, but it feels pain. And forever and ever and ever, you are in the lake of fire. For all of eternity. Tormented. Forever and ever and ever. You say, well, how could you believe? Because the Bible said so. I mean, the Bible's right on so many different issues. You say, well, have you ever seen hell? Have you ever seen lake of fire? No, I haven't. But I've seen the other things that the Bible's right on. And the Bible says this is what's going to happen in the end times. And it's happening just perfect accuracy. 100% perfect accuracy. Now, if the Bible's correct on that, why wouldn't it be correct on something like the eternality of hell? Eternal torment in hell. Oh, well, it's right on prophecy, but it's just a little bit too negative to say that people are going to burn forever. So let's kind of be a little bit more positive and just say oh, it's, it's annihilation. Uh, it's just you kind of just go to the, you return to the earth and you sleep. <laughs> uh, that's not what the Bible says. It's not all what the Bible says. And the Bible doesn't say that everybody's going to go to hell and there's no remedy or whatever else. You can get out of it. But you see, you have to look at yourself negatively and you have to look at Jesus Christ positively. An outside influence to come in and overcome the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. I'm getting worse. I'm aging. I got gray hair here, here, gray, some gray hair starting to grow in my hair here and think I'm getting older. Starting to get a little bit thin back here in my hair. Starting to have more aches and pains and things as I get up in the morning. Negative. Negative. A hundred years from now, I'm not going to be walking around on this earth in my current body and even healthier or something. That's ridiculous. But man keeps trying. You say, well, I'd, I'd really like to know how to be saved. You know, after watching this thing, I, I want to know. What am I supposed to do? Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 12. Well, 13, actually. We'll go down to there. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You wouldn't be ashamed of somebody that helped you out. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Jesus Christ died on the cross. And unlike other religious leaders or saviors or whatever, he didn't die and stay dead. He died on the cross. He was buried and three days later he rose from the dead. Showing that he has power over death. He was God manifest in the flesh when he walked this earth. And he is still God manifest in the flesh. In him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. He's the only one that can save you. You need his positive outward influence in your life to overcome the negative reality that is you. You say, well, uh, but I, I think that there's probably more to it than that. I should probably join the church that Christ founded. Uh, Jesus Christ didn't found the Catholic Church. There's no word Catholic in the entire Bible. That whole thing is a pagan creation. The Catholic Church is not Christ's church. That's why they rape children. Okay? Uh, I don't think the disciples and things were going around raping children and molesting children. And It's commonly reported in, this, in the city of Jerusalem that the disciples of Jesus are, you know, th molested a thousand children or something. Uh, no. <laughs> it's Satan's church. The Catholic Church is Satan's church. Get out of it if you're in it. Um, the reality of it is, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He did something that you couldn't do. He shed his blood. I mean, he was set up, he was framed, they lied about him, and they killed him, they put him to death. But through his death, 
He took on sin on that cross and He paid for your sin. He paid for my sin on the cross. And they buried Him and He rose again the third day. You say, well, I don't know if I can believe that. Okay, then you can't be saved. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the Word of God which liveth and abideth forever. This book can save you. This book tells you how to be saved. You're going to believe it? Well, if you do, call upon the name of the Lord. Wherever you're at, stop what you're doing. And you look up to heaven and you say, God, I don't know what truth is. I don't know what reality is. But all I do know is things are negative in my life. I don't want this life anymore. I need your help. I want to be saved. I want to know that I'm saved. I want to change life. I don't want to live this life anymore that I'm living. It's too negative. I want to know that there's something positive out there that I can reach forward to. Something I can look forward to. That's biblical salvation, friend. Looking at yourself for who you really are. You're not a good person. Be negative. Jesus had to die for your sins. That's negative. What He had to go through. But it's positive because you can go to heaven because of Him dying on the cross to pay for your sins. And you say, well, what about a changed life? That sure sounds negative to me. I'm going to have to give up this and give up that and do all this. That's no, actually positive. See, negative life is being addicted to things like drugs or pornography or alcohol or whatever. Those things are negative. When the Lord Jesus Christ saves you and the Holy Ghost of God comes and lives within you and all of a sudden now you're finding you have a different attitude towards sin, towards what the Bible says is sin. All of a sudden your language starts to clean up and your friends that used to mess you up, they don't want to be around you anymore. And all of a sudden other things start to improve and pretty soon you're looking at your life and saying, you know what? Uh, yeah, it's, it's rough sometimes having people hating my guts and whatever and casting out my name as evil, like the Bible says would happen. But you know, it sure is positive. Boy, my, my, my health is better and, and, you know, whatever. I mean, the Lord will clean up your life. It's positive, you see. Yes, there are positive things in a very negative world, but it's only truly positive if it's based upon Scripture if it's based upon a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's going to be it for this sermon. Um, things are getting worse, friend. Um, and as a Christian, I can look at the things and say, as they're getting worse, I'm getting closer to the positive time when I'm going to be, hear my voice called and said, Brian, come up hither. Your time on earth is done. Come up. Enter into the joy of thy Lord. I'm going to go to a perfect place with perfect temperature and perfect health. No more headaches, no more taxes, no more people hating my guts, no more profanity, no more all the different stuff down here that I hate. And it's all going to be over, just like that. But boy, what about the people that get left behind? What about those people? War, death, famine, judgment of God for seven years. Over 90, probably 90, 95 percent of the people are going to die in that future time of Jacob's trouble. The Lord Himself, in Matthew chapter 24, He says, except those, those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And you can see it. You can see it coming. You know, unless you're just positive about everything. Things are getting better. <laughs> so that's going to be it. I do hope and pray that you take into consideration these things and uh, that you get saved because it's the most important thing that there is in this entire life that you have. So what is the point of life? To get to know your Creator. That's the whole point. That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.